Hey, y'all going YouTube. How y'all doing today? Y'all take a look at this uh, sorghum Sudan. You can see that it's grown in maybe about a, maybe about a foot since it rained, just under a foot since it rained. And this is just about what's come up right now. So, you know, realistically, I'd like to keep these animals off of this grass until I've got some uh, biomass accumulated before I let them eat it. But starting uh, since yesterday, I've noticed that my animals are starting to bloat. I'm starting to have some uh, some grain, uh, some some grain bloat. And so I have to let these animals on it or I'll have to bring in forage. When I first brought in this grain and it was chopped up, when I, and I saw that it was a, a a super finely chopped up grain, one of my big concerns was that the animals were going to digest the grain too quickly and it was going to cause them to bloat. And right when I got done yesterday, uh, taking a look through these animals in the morning, and I saw that they were bloating, that's what I uh, that that's what I ultimately. Uh, uh, boiled it down to was that what I what I think is happening is that these animals are bloating because the grain is too finely chopped But if you look at the grass, you can also see that the planting density on this grass has uh, has has dropped significantly It uh, I do need to put some more uh, I do need to put more seed on this field And uh, yep Oh, okay. I, I was taking a look at the field right here, and I was like, I was one, I was, I was just kind of uh, startled for a second. I thought I saw a salt crust on the top of my field, but I don't think that that's it. That, I don't think that this is a salt crust. I think the soil is drying out a bit. But a salt crust would be a uh, the the first indicator that uh, that the soil has too much fertilizer on it and. I, uh, it's just the soil is just drying out, and so the uh, the YouTube weather people. When I take a look uh, at, at at the weather, the YouTube weather people are saying that the uh, the weather uh, that the uh, that the rain is just going to be hanging around over in my area until about the thirteenth. So that's that, that's what the YouTube people are saying that they're they're saying that there's a, a chance for it to rain here up until about the 13th in my area. And so I figure, you know, and they're saying that it's gonna be about a half inch to a one inch uh, um, uh, rain accumulation is what, they're, is, what they're, uh, is what they're estimating. And so if I even have a 30% a, a chance right now of getting one inch rain, I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. And I am going to just, I'm just going to prepare my field like it's about to rain a half inch or an inch. And so when I saw the uh, the weather data this morning or uh, yesterday, I figured what I'm going to do is I'm going to so fertilizer right now. So urea is the benchmark fertilizer that I use in terms of keeping track of fertilizer prices because fertilizer is a commodity, just like corn or just like live cattle. And so. Urea is the, the 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 thing that I use in terms of uh, the uh, the price of fertilizer in, in terms of keeping track of the price of fertilizer, and you can look it up on the internet. The price of urea, just look up the price of urea per ton. And so urea right now is about two hundred and ninety dollars per ton. And uh, okay, so last year. When I started all this, uh, well, I bought two and a half tons of urea, and then I bought one and a half tons of uh, of triple seventeen, and that that's that's how much fertilizer that I went through in uh, in about uh, in about uh, ten months. And that fertilizer it would have cost me about thirty five hundred dollars, all of it together, and that thirty five hundred dollars would have been enough for me to grow enough cat uh, to grow enough feed. Th these animals have been growing grass for about their entire life. Up until the last month and about two weeks in the winter time when it got real cold and my ragrass died these animals have been on grass the entire time and so that uh, that two and a half tons of urea and one and a half tons of triple 17 is what uh is what I is what I went through in terms of uh, uh, putting grass uh, putting a fertilizer on the field and so if I were gonna do that again this year let's say I needed another two and a half tons of urea 
and one and a half tons of uh of triple 17 the uh my budget this year would be uh would be uh would be smaller than it was last year so last year i may have spent thirty five hundred dollars but if i buy two and a half tons of urea this year at 290 a ton it's going to cost me about 650 dollars and if i buy one and a half tons of triple 17 triple test 17 is usually just about 30 percent more expensive than urea so if i pay uh 290 for urea i'll pay about 390 for triple 17 about 375 for triple 17. so if i was going to refertilize my entire field for the entire year it cost me about uh about about 1200 dollars and so if i have 1200 dollars i can i can grow enough grass to feed about 35 animals uh well uh well, okay and these animals are large too if i was going to feed smaller calves you know if i fed uh, if i fed the little the little doodlers uh the little dingle dongers you know and I, and I fed them from about a two and a half weight to about a five weight i could probably feed about uh, about a uh, 70 of them at a time i could probably feed about you know if i was going to properly graze this grass if I was gonna properly graze this grass with smaller calves, I will need to increase my the, the the lighter the calves get, the higher the stocking density is. So if I was gonna raise three, uh, let's say I was gonna raise three and a half weight calves, if I was gonna wait raise three and a half weight calves, it, I would need two times as many calves as a seven weight calf. If I were going to uh, just about uh, anticipate that they're gonna eat the same amount of food because the, the, a cat a cattle uh, they'll almost always eat exactly two to about two and a half percent of their body weight a day that's about how much food they need you know uh, well when i feed these animals i measure out their feed when i put them at two and three quarter percent feed a day intake like uh they, they start bloating I, I also think that i'm feeding them too much you know i took them from a uh, from eating well I, i've been feeding them about 2.75 percent of their body weight a day and they've uh, they they started bloating and when i when i take a look at my cattle they're all they're also showing symptoms of being fat they're 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 showing symptoms of accumulating fat and so uh yep i'm gonna have to drop their feed intake a bit because i'm feeding they're, they're, they're getting too much food and it's uh causing them to i think that getting too much volume and food is also causing them to uh what is it to bloat and so I think the, the feed being too finely chopped is causing them to bloat and them getting too much of it is also causing them to bloat. And so, yep, uh, when I budget out my entire year, if I wanted to raise about 120 cattle, if I was gonna raise about 120 uh, three and a half weight cattle, I'd have to, I'd have to look, I'd have to make sure that I had about $1,200 to, to, to invest into growing grass to be able to feed you know, and then I also have to, to anticipate that it's going to cost me about a $700 in grass seed. So it's going to, you know, if I wanted to run about 120 to 150 cattle a year, you know, it's going to cost me about $2,000. But, you know, the, the cool thing about cattle is if I put in $2,000, right, if I put in $2,000 a year, I'll, I'll make money on the money that I put in. So if I put $2,000 in and I grow 10, 10 acres of grass, uh year round for these cattle the cattle will eat it and when the cattle eat it they'll they'll, they'll put money back in my pocket because these animals they, they eventually uh, go to market and when they go to market i get paid per poundage so you know the two thousand dollars is not the thing that i worry about you know when i when i look at farming and i say i'm got to go farm 10 acres you know i don't look at oh my god the ten the two thousand dollars a year is going to be the hard part it's not going to be the hard part the, the 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 planting the grass the taking care of the grass and taking care of the animals that's that's the actual hard part i don't even worry about the money you know i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie uh I know that that sounds a little bit bougie or whatever, but I don't even worry about the money. Like when I when I go out and I farm and I say, you know, I'm going to do this, I understand deep down that it's going to cost me about $1,500, that it's going to cost me about $2,000, but I don't even worry about it. You know, uh, you know, like when, when, when people go, oh man, like I, I ain't going to go uh, farm because of the, the, the money, the, the, you know, they're, they're just, it's just too expensive. And it's like, you know, you know, the, the $2,000 a year, that it costs to grow 10 acres of grass is, is is the easy part the hard part is actually growing the grass and, and taking care of the animals and sourcing good animals 
you know uh, so me i don't even worry about the money the two thousand dollars a year is fine you know it's perfectly fine and the stocking density on on these uh, on this grass is very important to have the the correct amount of stocking density on this grass particularly for, for stalker cattle because when people run stalker cattle uh okay so the thing is uh it doesn't matter if it's me it doesn't matter if it's somebody else it doesn't matter who it is the person who's running the stocking uh, the stocker cattle it, it running stocker cattle on grass if someone told me that they were going to raise uh, lightweight stocker calves on grass i would think that they're either insane or that they better be very 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 good at farming i mean like the best one of the best farmers on the planet it, it, running stocker calves on grass lightweight stalker calves on grass is the hardest thing to do in terms of farming uh, it is one of the hardest farming things to do on the planet and you know because okay so here's the thing that grass is dynamic right if i grow my grass let, let's say i don't even bother bailing it for hay like here and, and i just grow the grass the grass is dynamic so one day it'll be something the next day it'll be It'll have grown the next day. It'll have grown if it got eaten. Uh, it'll need time to grow back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So grass, you know, the thing about grass is that as the grass grows, usually the protein content drops and the fiber content increases. And when a small little, small little calf, like a two and a half weight to five weight calf, is eating grass, they need to eat the correct type of grass because the grass needs to have about a 16 to 20 percent protein. If they're, if they're if they're two and a half weight, the grass needs to be at about 16 to 20 percent protein for the for the calves to be able to, to develop properly on it. If the grass has gone beyond that stage and the cattle are eating a 12 to 14 percent protein grass and, and the cattle are eating it and, and, you know, and people who don't know, they won't know. But if if a calf starts eating 12 to percent, 12 to 14 percent grass and they had and, and they're freshly weaned. What will happen is that the calf will get uh, will, will will develop malnutrition symptoms. They'll they'll start getting pneumonia. They'll start getting sick because they're developing malnutrition from have from having a, a too low of a quality feed. The the, the feed needs to be a, a higher a higher feed value. So they're going to need more more protein. They're going to need it to be more digestible. And so this grass, as it continues to grow, the protein content drops. And the digestibility of it drops these animals they need to graze the grass at a rate that keeps the grass at at, at that at that range of uh, at that range of uh at that margin of success so so the, the animals need to keep the grass grazed fast enough so that these ants so that the grass is, is stays within a range of their uh, uh of their dietary requirements and so if the if if the calves if they if they graze the grass too slowly the protein content will go down too quickly the feed value of the grass will go down too quickly they'll start getting sick because they're having malnutrition from their diet if the calves are large and they're uh, like these calves over here if if they're large you know these are borderline yearlings you know they they're, they're able to stomach a, a lower quality food because uh, you know they 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 have a larger intestinal gut to, to hold food and so you know uh, r running stalker calves lightweight stalker calves on grass is like the hardest job in farming ever you know like literally i'm like i'm not even making that up and i'm not and i'm not saying that to to make myself look good or to make other people look bad i'm i'm literally saying that what i do here is probably one of the hardest farming jobs on the planet. And running stalker calves on fresh grass is, is very difficult. And you know, and you know, uh, these lightweight stalker calves, uh, you know, a lightweight stalker calf, you know, I probably wouldn't put them on uh, on on, so on sorghum Sudan. You know, in all honesty, I, I would want to raise them on a uh, probably more like a pearl millet or a. Uh, or a cereal rye or something or, or a very high nitrogen containing a, a very high uh, protein containing grass you know like these animals when they started they're they're, they're about the first seven months of life uh, six months of life here when i brought them in uh late summer last year uh they they, they were raised on rye grass for about uh they, they were raised on annual rye grass for about uh five six months and they did very well on it you know and these animals, if you know, a majority of these animals, unless they're like a huge animal, you know, I, I have one animal over there that's that I would consider a, a in terms of a, a just, 
he's not huge because he's not tall enough to be huge but in terms of his body width he, he he he's got a very large body width and you know and he i would say he probably about uh about 800 pounds at a year old and and, and in all honesty if these calves are, are raised you know the, like you're gonna meet all, all all types of people in the world like there, there are some people who legitimately claim that their calves put on 100 pounds a month and they're like, oh my God, if your calf's not a thousand pounds, 1,200 pounds at a year old, they're starving. And that's not true, okay? Like, don't, don't listen to those people. Uh, if your calves are, a majority of your calves are between, and some, some some even smaller frame calves, maybe down to a six, about six and a half weight. If they're anywhere from about 650 to 800, you're doing just fine at a year old. You know, I mean, I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, none of my calves are, are showing some are showing signs of of being hungry. Like, look at this guy. You know, like does it like this this calf? He he in zero way, shape, or form looks hungry, right? And this is about a, an animal that's about a year old, and he's been eating grass about ninety percent of his life. Last month is when I started grain feeding them, and these animals are starting to bloat on that grain. But you know, this is about what about what a one year old animal looks like. And you know this animal's perfectly fine, so. And I would say he he probably about he probably gonna be about seven and a half eight weight. It's probably somewhere between that uh, about well oh, maybe about seven and a half closer to seven and a half. I would say he about seven hundred fifty pounds. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.